Well, Hitchhiker of the Mind in chat is saying the riot has been canceled. I'm saying we still riot. We are. We have fully transitioned into this far, fourth and final stream for tonight's uh, Featherfall Tabletop Battling COVID-19. Uh, we're doing the best we can, everything we can, and they're calling for rights in the chat. So I'll leave that onto the players' shoulders and get us those rights. But before we jump into Kids on Bikes and get everybody introduced and move on there, I want to say uh, I, I get the esteemed pleasure of closing out this first and we lost adam in the chat or adam what happened to you we just said you don't <laughs> leave the chat man uh it, fuck it we're gonna continue Whoa. i'm <laughs> sorry said, said to me. yeah so uh <laughs> draco was just in space and now he is in indiana small town ready to go for it <laughs> i don't know what happened to adam um he's back Better than ever, I bet. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this is the fourth and final game. I I get the pleasure of closing this baby out, and and I just want to say thank you to everybody that has shown up so far and donated. Uh, confound it in chat. You are the man of the hour, uh, putting a lot of ducats in in uh, in in these coffers. So we appreciate that. Uh, everything everybody is doing. Um, there is no donation that is too small, and it is going to good hands and for a good cause, and uh, we appreciate it. Um, we are Featherfall Tabletop. This is our first ever charity stream. A um, couple things coming up down the pipe. Tomorrow night we have our Curse of Strahd episode. Uh, Monday, Jen, who just DM'd in space, is going to the Arcane Empire to DM another game. Tuesday, the gods we know. Wednesday, dead and fay. We got we got a lineup for you for your quarantine time to be filled. There we are. Um, so we're going to run kids on bikes. Uh, this will be the first time I've DM'd a kids on bikes game. I think this is the first time for everybody playing in a kids on bikes game. So it'll be uh, it'll be fun. And look at that, Featherfall Tabletop just gave you inspiration in uh, the Twitch chat. So you all have an extra point of. Adversity token. So you all start with three instead of two. So you can mark those. You have three instead of two. Um, we're going to get started and just jump right in. Um, I'll have I'll, I'll put it around the table. Have you all introduce yourself. To talk about your character real quick. Uh, tell us who you are, where we can find you on the internet, if uh, you so choose to share that. And then we'll get into the game. So we will start where I can see it on screen. We're going to start in the bottom left with Adam. Uh, tell us about you, and then tell us about uh, Cassandra Joan. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm trying to tweet here, but fine, I'll go. Uh, me, you can find me on uh, all, things, um, all Things Internet at Adamus Lamas. And here on Tuesdays, as we know, and here tomorrow for Curse of Stroud, and I'll be playing Bull. My character tonight is uh, Cassandra Jones, and she is basically a 16-year-old uh, spooky molder, spooky fox molder, and that's about all I, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Adam. Um, we'll do a shout-out to Anonymous, donating $20. We are up to 670 Uh I'm just going to say it right now. You guys get another adversity token. You're already up to four. Um, hopefully, no, not hopefully. We don't want them to slow down with those donations, but you're up to four adversity tokens. Continuing with our introductions, <clears throat> we'll go to uh, Draco. Uh, tell us about you and Lamont Daniels. About me. Um, I'm Draco. I I guess you can find, you can find me um, on Twitter, Twitch as Draconics, D R A. K O N I Q U E S. Um, I guess I play, I play games every so often on Twitch, and I just tweet about games on Twitter. I guess um, today I'm playing Lamont Daniels. So uh, he's a he's like the all rounder type of guy you'd find in a high school. He's good at sports, good at um, like drama, does band, like re relatively smart. He's 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 he thinks he's the perfect person. <laughs> perfect uh yeah thank you uh draco and yeah back-to-back -back games for you so you're gonna be yeah 
retired after this, I imagine. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move over to the other side of the screen. Uh, top right, Marlo, tell us about you and uh, Anya Pande. Hi. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm Marlo. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Marlo Bogus. So it's B-O-G-G-E-S-S. -S. That's my last name. Uh, and that's on my Twitter. Uh, feel free to follow me. Um, I'm playing Anya tonight. She's a 14-year-old... Uh, um, described as like a future CEO of a Fortune 500 <laughs> company, so she's on it. Nice. Uh, yeah, we, you know, get out of her way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that leaves us with uh, Brandon down in the bottom right. Tell us about you and uh, Theo Easton. Easton is his Easton last is is correct. Uh, I'm Brandon. You can find me on Twitter at b underscore Sherard. Uh, and uh, I tweet nothing of substance. Come join me if you'd like. <laughs> um, and, and looks as though Theo is a, a real team player. He just he's the one who holds everybody together and says, "Come on, guys, let's get to it." You know, um, I'm excited to play him. I've never you know never played this game. Never played a character like this. It sounds fun. All right. Uh, another shout out. Uh, Dad just no donated ten dollars, and I actually believe that is my uh, literal father. Uh, same with uh, Billy Zed, if you didn't know. We are brothers. Uh, that is our dad. He donated $10, so he's probably on stream watching this. Uh, hopefully, we don't embarrass him. Um, so we're up to, what is that, 680? I'm not going to give you tokens for that one because we've already got a lot. We'll see how <laughs> we'll see how the game plays out. A lot. Uh, don't want to stack the deck too much in your hands. But let's get this started. So all of you are high schoolers in the town of Hebron. Hebron Indiana, small town, uh, roughly about 3,000 people in this town, um, founded by a church many years ago, uh, and there is the, the one central church, the Hebron Methodist Church in town. This is a farming community, uh, mainly de uh, growing in uh, corn, so your town is really surrounded by cornfields, so you're kind of like in the middle of just fields of corn. Um, you There isn't no like movie theater there's there's a bowling alley that's got an attached arcade that's kind of the the hot spot for uh, the kids to go to but you are all an in high school which actually shares the building with the middle school and the elementary school because it is such a small town so uh it is a friday evening friday the 13th in september uh 1985 uh so we're going back in time here uh you are all part of the investigations club and you're the, the pseudo leader of this club, uh, uh, Theo Easton, played by Brandon tonight, has called a meeting after school. And that you've been watching the clock just kind of tick away until three o'clock finally comes around. That final bell comes out and you all go running out. Running. I mean, you, you go, you, you put your books away, you get your backpack, you, you get ready for the weekend, but you all meet up at the flagpole out in front of the school. And the school is on uh, the corner of a street in the southern end of town. And most of the town is all north of you and surrounding the school is a cornfield. But you're all meeting out there um, to see what Theo has to say about uh, tonight's meeting. Uh, so that, that bell rings, you get out there and you're all making your way. Uh, Theo, you, I imagine you are already there at the flagpole kind of waiting, um, and everybody else starts to show up. Very cool. All right, guys. I I come, hey. oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I think I come out kind of um, trudging along. Got my backpack just slung over one arm. <laughs> I probably I don't look enthused at all. Theo, why did you choose today of all days? Are you assuming everyone's here already? Well, so far it's just you and uh, Lamont. Oh, okay, that's fine. <clears throat> because I've heard things, and uh, Lamont, have you not heard things? I I've, I've heard things, now? but I've heard things and I could act on those things on, I don't know, like a Monday or two, a day that I don't have But practice. it must be the 13th. It must be today. Today is the day to do it, and especially because of what it is. This, this spookiness must be investigated on the 13th, and it just it spoke to me. And I want to check out what yeah. this is. That house? Okay. 
I, I want to check that out. That's that's what we're doing. That's what yeah, I okay. feel the need for us to do. It, it better be worth it because coach is going to make me do suicide sprints if I miss after this. So uh, if I end up throwing up, it's on you. <laughs> well, look, I'll do them with you. Like, we'll pick a time. Oh, my God. No, please, please don't. I don't yeah, really want anyone no. knowing I associate with you. <laughs> what? I'm sure it will be worth it. I have this hunch, I have this feeling. Okay. Where, where's good. everyone else? I know. That's a good question. So, I mean, at, this, at this point, Anya, are you showing up? Yeah. So she comes barreling out of the back of the aut auditorium with her backpack on her back and her violin case in her left hand. And she's like, this had better be important. I am set up. We are supposed to be rehearsing right now. They're missing their first chair. Well, and it's well that they do, because you know what? We are missing sanity in this dear town of ours. And it's only us who can figure it out. Like, haven't you heard about that one weird, weird house down the way? Don't you want to check that out? Not particularly. Really? That sounds so interesting to me. I don't. I don't know. It's just uh, this is what we were meant to do. We we at investigations club. This is literally what we're meant to do. Theo, you know that house is at the end of Poplar Court, um, and it has been abandoned for as long as you can remember. Uh, you can't really think of a time that this house hasn't been abandoned, but there has been words of strange sounds uh, coming out of that house, and that is what is piquing your interest as the lead investigator here. Could I, so could I pretend as though my house is close enough that, like, in the dead of night, I myself might have heard this out my window? Um, so you actually live in a different part of the town. It's, it's a little ways away. Okay. So it would be... It would be too, it's too far away. You've only heard things. Got it. Uh, heard from, of. Like word of mouth. Heard of people talking about it, not right. actually encountered it yourself. Got it. Heard of mouth. Heard of mouth. Actually, you live in, uh, it's called Park Place, which is like one of the newer developments in town. That's where your house would be. Um, and it is like a series of cul-de-sacs kind of off to the edge of town. One of the newer developments. say at this point um cassandra has come out of the cornfields and she's just <laughs> she's just been out there like chain smoking like drinking coffee she's like, do, do you all know that um friday the 13th you teens us kind of pointing at everyone uh are 10 times statistically more likely to die on friday the 13th i'm just throwing that out oh, there I, we need to be going around looking at uh the spooky house at the end of poplar street yes we do and you know, you know you're ten times you know you're ten times more likely to die of cancer because you're smoking a cigarette. <laughs> That's not true. Scientists have not proven that. That is a uh, conspiracy. <laughs> we actually have. Yeah, that's a thing, dude. That's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. But no. Okay, that adds to the thrill. You see, because only on a day such as this, you know, if the odds are up. I don't know. I feel like we're going to get to the bottom of this because have, I haven't you heard I've heard from like friends and things around school, man. People are hearing stuff from that way. You know? Like, why, how could we not check this out? What if it kills? What if it kills someone else? We will have been responsible because we missed an opportunity. We what, need to check this what, out. Well, uh, oh, hold on. I don't when, think that's how responsibility has, works. <laughs> Yeah, and has anybody died? You just said people have heard voices, or not even voices, things. Like, that's not a... What, we're... But, but we don't know what it could become, guys. Like, I don't know. I feel like my interest is piqued. My curiosity is piqued. And what a day, what an evocative day it is to go do this. Like, come on, what, what, how can we not? You're already missing whatever, things. You're already missing recital. We're already here. How can we not do this? We need to go. We need to get it done. So you would you would know too that most of like your uh, investigations would happen after dinner time. So um, Lamont, with your practice and maybe a quick uh, music practice after school, you'd be able to con you'd be able to go through that. But you would then have to run home, have dinner, uh, smooth things over with the parents. Like how are you going to get out of that house? 
and, and go meet up to go do this investigation. So there, there is a little bit of time before you are all going to come back together to uh, go out around the town. So, what, so when is this happening? Do I have time to go to go to practice? Because when's practice? Um, is it I, right now? Yeah. Okay. When's it in? Um, should be. I don't know. About three hours. So three. around six. What's everyone else doing? Yeah, I'm practicing with the rest <laughs> of the the orchestra. So okay. Do what you got to do. Then we'll meet up at this exact spot in three hours. Can we be done practicing and doing everything in three hours? Yeah. 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 You sound less than enthused, but I promise you it's going to be worth it. I absolutely promise you. Uh, Theo, you know of a bus stop uh, right on the corner of Poplar and Boardwalk. That would be a good place to stop and meet. There's a street light. There's a little um, uh, like bus stop. A three-sided building that you could, you know, kind of hide yourself in a little bit. Uh, that's a good place to kind of uh, to meet up. Or guys, what do we think about a bus stop nearby my house? It so- sounds good. A bus stop? Do you know you're seven hundred times likely to be abducted by serial killers waiting at a bus stop at night? <laughs> <laughs> and how 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 long is the list of things that can give you cancer, Cass? How long is that list? Oh, I don't know. 12? It's right quite now? long, is it not? <laughs> so <laughs> stuff's going to happen no matter what. I'm, I'm willing to take this chance. Let's get abducted. No, don't get abducted. Wait, meet me by the bus stop, okay? That's where we're going to meet. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just going to start walking away. Right. Well, as long as... I think Haley's comments come by tonight, so as long <laughs> as we see that, I'm fine. That's a sign. <laughs> That's all the sign we need. As if Friday the 13th weren't a cool enough day to go do this. Now we have a freaking comet. Keep the Kool-Aid away from this guy. Let's go. Can, can we get somebody to confirm the last Haley comment citing? Is it in fact September 13th, 1985? So as you guys are starting to wrap up this conversation and uh, start thinking about what tasks you have to do before a uh, meeting at this bus stop. So I'll, I'll let you kind of role play out the rest of this conversation. And then we're going to, you're going to spread into your um, own individual activities and then meet again here pretty soon. Yeah. I think um, Lamont just started leaving. Once it started, the conversation started jacking on, especially after the 700% more likely to get abducted. <laughs> but <laughs> Lamont just turned and decided walking straight back to the, um, to the gym to okay. get started with practice. Okay. Uh, holy, holy cow, guys. Uh, I think we just had a hundred dollar donation from, uh, and, and this, this makes sense. Party got 84. <laughs> I know right. Where this is somebody from 1985. Ish 84 that gave in. Uh, super helpful. Thank you, Party God 84, for this uh, hundred dollar donation. Uh, I, oh, I, yeah, thank you. I don't, yeah, I don't know what to say other than thank you. Um, that just yeah, blew you. everything else out of the water. We that $750 stretch goal lasted for 30 seconds, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, uh, everybody's blowing away any expectations that we ever had, and I, uh, I appreciate it so much. Um, Wait, are, are we doing the Breakfast Club dance? I don't know if we can do it sitting down. <laughs> I don't, yeah, so I don't, I don't know dance? yet. We're I'm going to tell you right now, I've never watched it, so... <laughs> I, no, all right, I don't uh, know what that dance is. Yeah, we'll, th- we'll think of something to do at the end of this to uh, <laughs> show our appreciation for all of this. Um, so, Lamont, yeah, you're heading into the locker room, and you're going through the normal motions to get your, uh, you know, dressing down into your uh, practice gear. Um. You're kind of worried about juggling so many things right now as as you are with the basketball practice and then your double duty in, in the drama club. Uh, that's kind of weighing on you a little bit. Um, yeah. you, your time is spreading thin. Um, you're stretching yourself out and you know you might you might have a little uh, trepidation about going in on this investigation, but you've agreed to it so far. Um, what is? 
Cassandra doing as in this time between now and when the street lamps turn on, we'll say that's kind of when you decided you're going to meet up when those street lights turn on um, at the bus stop. What, what are you going to do? She's back at, at her place. She's got okay. like a, a, a tree house set up going on and there's a bunch of like cork boards with just like yarn connecting dots. And she's just sitting there. She's been watching uh, the JFK assassination on repeat for the past uh, hour or so. As long as we're, we're hanging out. She's like back to the left. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and and then she's also like has a, another little uh, TV of Bigfoot, <laughs> and, like him walking through the forest. Yeah, the the classic footage. And she's like, I think maybe, huh? Um, Cassandra, are your parents like helicopter parents? Are they? always in your stuff or are you just kind of left to play in your tree play in your tree house and... i think they, i think they both probably work nights okay and so she's basically just on her own uh since you know there's would be sleeping during the day okay and then at night they're like kind of still sleeping just waking up and getting ready to go back to work okay yeah so you won't have a problem sneaking out and heading to uh the rally point Okay, uh, let's move over to Anya. What What is your after-school activities like? How are you um, going to persuade your parents if uh, that's something you need to do? So uh, Anya goes back to practice and sits in first chair, picks it right up, knows exactly where they are, because that's who she is as a person. <laughs> and then she goes, after all that's over, she heads straight home. Um, her parents are divorced, so this is her dad's weekend, so nobody cares. Her dad's drinking in his study, so she just goes upstairs, throws her school stuff down, um, gets gets changed into, like, a t-shirt and some jeans, and uh, she's ready to go. Okay. Um, does your mom live in the same town? Yes. Okay, so so you kind of have two, two places of of uh, respite if you need it. Um, mm. Okay. Uh, Theo. Easton, what are you doing? Well, what, so, what, what's your after school activities and how are you going to get to the, the meeting point? Well, I think I, cause what, what, what play? Cause we're all part of the drama club. Do we know like what kind of play they're currently working on or uh, what do what do you want? What do you want it to be? Well, okay then. Here's here's here we go. Um, before I go home, um, I drop off my copy of uh, whatever. Pick a play, but I drop it off with uh, Mr. Yost. Is it Yost or Yost? Um, you're you're the drama instructor. Yes. Say Macbeth, the deadliest <laughs> of the plays. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Okay, Macbeth, Mr. Yost. Yes. And I say. All right, catch you later, Mr. Yost. We're off to do incredible things because you know what today is? And then we have a little chit-chat, and then I'm off to my house. When I get there, I put on Ride the Lightning on cassette with my little <laughs> headphones, and I start amping myself up and playing air guitar and stuff. And I kind of grab a push pin, and I, I, I smush it into my calendar, on, on which is written Friday the 13th, and I've scribbled in red pen right there, and I've said... Today's the day. I've wrote, written on my calendar. Today's the day. So I go, I go like, bam, and I start like, all right, amping myself up and. Okay. You know. And you, you have your headphones in, and you're, you're doing all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there it's is like a, a, there is a knock on your door, and you can't hear it. Uh, the knock happens again and again, and then finally your door opens up, and you can see your mom standing in the doorway, speaking words that you cannot hear. Uh, <laughs> sorry, they're calling me out. Headphones in. Your headphones are on. There were no earbuds in 1985. I see that too. Uh, yeah. So your headphones are on, and uh, you you see your mom mouthing these words to you, and kind of st standing hand on the hip, kind of angrily. Um, and then she she does this thing to you, like, <laughs> and, then, and I go, "What, Theo?" <laughs> I go, "Hi, mom." Yeah. Um, I, this is not studying your lines. 
for Macbeth. Mom, don't even worry about it. I got that down. I have higher priorities. Okay, um, dinner is about ready, so come down in the next five minutes, please. I said, great, I have the appetite of a <laughs> champion. And I throw down my headphones, and I start stampeding towards food. Okay, and we'll kind of fast track some of this. You're down there, you're eating. Um, she is going to ask you, um, so what are your plans after dinner this evening? I'm, I'm shoveling food into my face. I'm like, it's, it's this thing where we're all going to get together and for figuring out what the heck's going on with that freaky house over there. You, what, you know, you're not going to meet with that Cassandra girl, are you? And I pause mid bite and I'm like, no. She <laughs> stopped me in the grocery store the other day and told me a, a whole diatribe about Bigfoot. I, <sighs> I don't like this investigation club, but. If it makes you feel better, Mom, we're not going to, like, try and find Bigfoot or anything. That's just her shtick. That's just her thing. Okay. Gotta let people be themselves, Mom. Okay. Back. You're back home by nine. Yeah, okay, Mom. I will do. Okay. You got uh, it. We're going we're gonna to go back. Come full circle here. Go back to Lamont. Um, so your practice is over. Uh, what, what are you doing after uh, basketball practice? Um, I'm probably gonna head home just to get showered and stuff because okay. i'd probably end up getting to practice a little bit late and uh my coach isn't isn't the most merciful when it comes to tidiness so i probably have to do the runs anyway <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna head right. home to get shower okay um okay so yeah you come home um take a shower same thing. Your parents are, are kind of are there. And uh, Lamont, how was practice today? Says your mom. It it was rough. It was I I came a little bit late again today. So yeah, my legs are aching. Oh, so you had to do your sprints then? Yeah. Hey, okay, well, how are we going to fix that for the future? Uh, manage my time better <laughs> and arrive Good. to practice early. Good. So what is uh, what is your plan this evening? You have homework. Um, not not any homework that I can't do tomorrow. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm so gonna you're putting I'm, off today what you can do tomorrow. Uh, yes. It, it's not. I just have plans today. I was gonna meet up with uh, the investigation club. <laughs> you, she, your mom kind of rolls her eyes when you say that. Um, again, like Cassandra's kind of been around and and kind of confronts a lot of people. Um, so this again, it's uh, it's a nice break from everything else I'm doing. Okay, all right. I trust you. You you have yet to let me down in any way. So. 10 o'clock, you'll be home? 10 o'clock. Okay. And then homework tomorrow? I promise I'll do my homework tomorrow. Okay. You promise? I'm, I'm a man. You, grew, you raised me to be a man of my words. All right. Um, finish your dinner. And then home at 10. So all, done. <laughs> all right. So at this point, we kind of fast forward. Evening, the sun starts to set. Street lamps start to, to pop on all, the, all up and down. Uh, the main main street of Hebron, and you all start to make your way to um, the corner bus stop on Poplar Street and Boardwalk. Um, again, I think Theo, you're you're the first one there, like super eager. Um, but everybody else kind of starts to file in, and, and you you all get there relatively at the same. All everybody else gets there about the same time. Jeez, how do you always end up here before us? Because I am just so ready to go. I am here. Oh, this, sa okay. this sounds so cool. Did you get did you get obviously you got out of the out of the house okay? Did your parents suspect anything? Su suspecting um I mean they didn't really ask that many questions. I just told them I was with you. Perfect. Guys. Brilliant. That's the way it should be. Good man. We're, we're not doing anything like 
seriously illegal, are we? No, we're just checking out an old spooky house, and I can't wait to hear what Cassie has to say about it, because you know she's got something. <sighs> yeah, she, she's, she always does. Isn't this technically trespassing? So Anya just walked up, and that's the first thing she did. <laughs> Perfect. Oh no. This is gonna if this gets a mark on like my permanent record or like whatever, I'm gonna be really upset. Uh, well, so am I. It's gonna make all of the stuff I've done mean nothing if I have a criminal record. Guys, no one even goes by this house anyway. Like we are under not only is this a deserted place, but we are under the cloak of night. We're gonna be okay. She We're like right. shakes her head. Cloak of night? Okay. <laughs> Save that for the stage, Theo. I can't. The world's a stage. <laughs> At this point, uh, Cass, you, you start to make your way and yes, you, you, you see Theo doing his theatrics <laughs> as you're she's showing up. Riding in on her bike and she comes to like a skidding stop. Um and she's like, you know, I did some research on this house and oh, no. <laughs> Did some research. See, I told yeah, you. So the, the owner, well, there was a family that lived there. The father snapped and killed everybody. I mean, <laughs> they, they, that same and thing he, about he burned another. the house down, and then somebody else rebuilt upon the land, and they killed their family, but they didn't burn it down this time. So, so, so it's double cursed. Exactly, and that's just so totally my jam. We have we have so much to explore. Where did what, what, you do this research? The National Enquirer. Where'd you get this from? What's everybody else doing as as we're starting to gather this party? Um, I was going to be asking um, Theo. So, what exactly are we doing here? Are we just looking around, trying to find someone, something, take something? So, we, and in broad strokes, and in, in general. We are attempting to ascertain the exact nature of this weird abandoned house. What's in it, what we could find, what clues we can uncover as to the nature of the noises everyone's been hearing, apparently that everyone's been hearing. It's specifically, so, it's been a whimpering and a crying noise. Oh, okay, yeah. So I've heard from people in the hallways and things, they've said it's like a whimpering, crying thing. So like, what if there's a person in there? And are we not the investigators club? So this seems like the perfect case. This seems like our magnum opus so far. It seems like a uh, job for the police. Well, <clears throat> I can't ease your anxieties too much, but I can say that it's going to be worth it. Anya, what do you think? I don't think it's going to be worth it because worth it to me would be <laughs> finding like a big bag of gold or something, but Let's do this thing. We're here. Whatever. What? Who's to say we won't find, if not gold, then some sort of item of a valuable nature? So we find some whimpering ghost hiding a bag of gold. That sounds like super reasonable. I mean, if we do, I call dibs on the gold. You can do it to ghost. Um, I believe we will be splitting that gold, sir. Yeah, ninety <laughs> ten. I get a ninety. A ninety. Yeah. As in percent? <laughs> yeah. I will not stand for this terrible mistake Because I'm taking it. Anyway, whatever. Find gold. We'll deal with it later. Then, what? Like, look, for one thing, if we find gold, we're all rich as hell. And I could buy that stereo system I've always wanted. We could buy actual vinyl. Um, we could buy everything we ever wanted. Ani, you could buy a new instrument. Point is... This could be something really cool, and I'm just, God, I'm ready to go, man. Cass was, we were just saying, as Cass dropped from the call, uh, the the librarian has kind of set aside a book of history, uh, of Hebron, Indiana history, and there is a little blurb about this house on Poplar Court, but strangely less than any any other thing. There's just, a, it's almost a footnote not a whole lot. Everything else has kind of embellishment, but this one doesn't have a whole lot. Yeah, guys. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of info on this house aside from that, like those crazy uh, family murders. But I, I don't know if this is maybe 
I hear back in the day the government did a lot of testing in this area, and that's why our town's still small. Uh, yeah. Aliens have also been spotted here before. We all know that. We've seen them. We've seen the lights in the skies. Um, you think Haley's Comet coming by tonight is a coincidence? I don't think so. What if there's alien... What if the baby or the kid sounds or the kid aliens? What if they're trapped in there? They just want to go home. What do you, what do you think, Cassie? What, what do you think? Could that be a thing? I feel I, like we should check it out. I guess. I mean, E.T., was was he a baby alien? That that was that was out in theaters at this point, yeah. Yeah, I think that was like eighty, <laughs> eighty two. The whole time this is happening, I'm just like looking at Anya, like, oh, oh, I, I don't know what's going on here. All right, well, I mean, yeah, if there's uh, if there's aliens in there, I'd love to make contact before at least you know Big Brother gets their hands on them. Okay, so let's compile a list of possibilities that we've discussed so far. Number one, there could be gold. Number two, there could be aliens. Number three, there could be human children. Number four, there could be alien children. Look at all of this stuff that we could potentially uncover, and would we not be doing a public service to uncover the truth? I think for once I'm on Cassie's side right now. Let's go check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm too get antsy. Over anyway. with. Um, hold on. Let's hold the phone. Fleshmith just raised uh, $50 there. Um, do we do the heart hands like everybody else? I think so. Uh, thank you, Flesh, for that $50 in, uh, in the bucket there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so you know that this house is at the end of this road. End of, uh, you're on the, the corner of Boardwalk and Poplar, and the house is at the very end, at the end of this little cul-de-sac. Let's get going, then. Uh, I have to wake up early tomorrow to practice for the, the play. So, I need to get home on time. Well, then we have a moment to lose. And from my backpack, I get, like, you know, the really dingy p or tiny pair of headphones and put them on and put it, play the tape and then just go... <laughs> and then just start running down the street. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Right. We, ha we have bikes. We have... We ha okay. Castle pulled the Polaroid, uh, her Polaroid from her uh, backpack and take a picture of the group. And then she'll just throw the photo like into a mailbox, just evidence in case we all go missing. So somebody has to find it. You're not somebody making me know. want to go with you guys anymore. Oh god. Okay. <laughs> and and I Theo runs knowing that he's just left his bike there. No matter. <laughs> it's within walking distance, isn't it? Or yeah. Yeah. It's like a block and a half. This this long road oh. that is Poplar is about a, a normal block and a half of a city street so kind of long but yeah i'm yeah, gonna so ride him a bike i'm gonna ride right past him <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, and when you when you do when you do when you go ahead Theo. when when you ride past me i i, I do like that like that sort of thing <laughs> Uh, Anya is like the last one behind at the bus stop, and so she yep. like looks around like, "Oh no, I'm much more likely to get taken by a serial killer. I better go after this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to uh, um, uh, so Lamont, as you're speeding ahead, you do see kind of the silhouette of this this house on the end of Poplar Street uh, open up, and uh, you can see the outline. It is a two story house. Um, kind of, kind of stately. Like it, it looks like back in the heyday could have been something. Um, holy shit, guys! I, sorry. You know when people are dropping fifty dollar donations in there, you got to stop and you got to recognize that. Uh, can, we, can we get a con like Again? collectively here? We're gonna we're gonna say con on the count of three and uh, do the best we can. Here we go. One, two, three. Con. con! Um, only. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I, again, we've just tripled our original stretch goal. Uh, what a machine that guy! <laughs> All right, back back to it, Lamont. You're riding and you're kind of pedaling, uh, letting your your uh, your muscles kind of take control, and you're almost using this as just a way to kind of let out some of the the kind of the weight you're feeling, and you're just powering through these pedals, and you see this two two story house kind of open up in your vision. Um, very overgrown around it. Used to be pretty stately. Um, could have been a nice house. There is a tall 
rusted chain link fence um, that surrounds it. It does have a gate that barely swings on its hinges. You can see there, it's kind of like uh, leaning in on each other, the gates are. Um, and then co- nothing but cornfields behind it. So Lamont, you get there first. Uh, what, what do you want to do as you approach? Once I get close enough to the gate, I guess, I want to just test out how strong it is. If it's, okay. It is just um, hanging there, but is it possible for me to just push it open, knock it down? The gates themselves are, while they are leaning in, they are kind of rusted shut, so it would take a okay. little bit of a, a push, or you can climb the fence to get over. Um, um, go ahead. I want to try and push it open, because I probably could make it over, but I don't okay. think my friends, all my friends could. All right. Give me a, here's our first roll, guys. Uh, you're going to oh, give okay. me a brawn check, okay, and I'll say this difficulty on. is a four. So you're going to um, roll your brawn dice. Um, whichever polyhedral that is. For me, it's a d6. Okay. And I rolled a one. Oh, shoot. So that's a <laughs> failure. Let's pause here. Let's talk yeah. about results. Um, so you failed by um, three? Yes. The character fails, but not too badly. Um, so as you do that and you push in your shoulder... You pull your hamstring muscle. Uh, You can still walk, but any kind of running is going to be at a disadvantage, we could say. Uh, Because as you push, you just pushed a little too hard and your shoulder, you kind of slipped and you you didn't get your shoulder into the meaty part of the gate to push it on. And we'll say at that point, um, Theo and everybody else, um, Cass and Anya, you start to make your way up there as you see Lamont kind of failing here. So I walk up and I go, oh, God. Lamont, what's going on? Um, I just, I don't, I don't know. I just testing out the gate. Um, it's, it's pretty strong. I think we're going to need a bit more people. I'm hoping to push you, this thing open. You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm just, um, just stretching out a bit. That's all, you know. How all right, tall, here, hang on. How tall is this gate? Uh, it's like a normal chain link fence, so like six feet. Okay. Can we just climb over it? Do we want to? I mean, do we want to climb? Do we have to muscle our way in? I mean, if you guys think you can, you can climb over it. I'm fine with that. Here, I'll do it, and then I, I kind of take a step back, and then just kind of jump on the fence and start trying All to right. climb it. Uh, you're gonna give me another, another roll. Uh, it'll be a flight check. Uh, okay. As flight kind of translates to dexterity tasks, so you're gonna give me a flight check. Anybody that wants to climb will be a flight check, and the difficulty okay. is four. I'm going to oh, do geez. that as well. I okay. got a one. I'm a lot better. <laughs> fl- oh, no. Two ones already. I <laughs> know. I got to the left. First. Got okay. a five. Okay. Uh, Anya, what'd you get? Uh, three. Ooh. So, Anya, you, you get up to the top and your foot's like you're going to plant your next foot in like the chain link and it slips and you <laughs> fall down. Ow. Um. Theo, as you are going up to the top and you're getting ready to step over, you cut your your, uh, forearm on like the little prickly part of the chain link fence that is up on top. So you Um, are uh, bleeding um, and you're kind of like straddled over the top now. Um, Lamont, you're able to, even with your pulled hamstring, it kind of pissed you off a little bit. The fact that you couldn't get the gate open, so you hide the fact that your hamstring was hurt and you're able to jump over and land on your feet, uh, Avenger style. And you are ready. Same cast. You're, you take a little more delicate approach to it. You get up there, get in over, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to risk anything. Um, but that leaves, that leaves Theo and Anya. You are still outside of the fence. No, I'm on top oh. of the fence. aren't I? Yeah. I should say, if you have failed a roll, you get to add an adversity token. So, yeah. Um, you can always you can use adversity tokens to add a plus one to a roll. You can use them to it. activate your special powers in in your character. If I had an adversity token right now, successfully hop the fence. Uh, you'd have to roll again. Okay. And you add it to it. I believe that's how that works. Um, Before he and- rolls again, Cass is going to take another picture of them, just like him stuck on top, <laughs> <laughs> and Anya on the other side of the fence. Okay. Uh, All right. Do we have to declare that we're going to use an adversity token beforehand, or yeah, let's. Yeah, we'll set that up. 
you have to because so let's say i give you a check of four and you only have a d4 to whatever flight you know that it might be tough so you might want to add one pre-roll okay okay so um, i intend to use an adversity so okay. can i All roll right. again yeah okay so flight skill still uh, four this one was a four okay so yeah, four plus your five, you you succeed and you land on the other side, um, bleeding a little bit from the forearm. I just, I, I go, I grimace, but then I'm like, all right, and then I run toward the. Okay. I'm Anya, gonna, it, yeah, I'm gonna roll again. I'm gonna add my adversity token. Okay. Um, four, five, so five. Okay, yeah, you, you, you kind of got your foot figured out now, and you you got to kind of put your foot in sideways, get it into that that square of each chain link and you're able to get up and over um no damage to you um so you are all inside this the surrounding now inside the 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 courtyard of this house you see that there are um doors and windows that lead into the house have all been boarded up um at least from what you can tell just st standing in the front and they are blocking any like easy access into this house is there like a a trellis or anything, uh, perhaps on this house. Uh, to like get up to sec second floor. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, uh, trellis is like the like kind of like ladder system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me, give me a brains check as you are kind of canvassing the outside of this house, looking for it, and we'll go difficulty five. That is a fifteen. Ooh, that's like a monster success. I got to look up. Oh, so you beat it by 10. D20 for, for brains, baby. Yeah, look at you. Big brain. Um, yeah, as you do this, you see... You're kind of peeking around. You see a row of windows that go into the basement that are not boarded up. That would be an easy access point. Okay. Um, she won't tell the group that. She's like, <laughs> maybe let's try the front door. It's probably... I guess it's better than nothing. I'm going to go to the front door. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the front door does have boards across it. So in, if you want to try to get in, it's going to be a brawn check. If you have any tools that are with you um, that may be in your backpack um, that can aid in this, the, the skill check will be lower. I definitely don't. So you said it's boarded? Yeah, boards going across. And same with the windows that that flank each side or on each side of this door. Oh, I didn't bring like a like a hammer or like a crowbar or anything. So nobody brought it. <sighs> Brandon, you're muted. Anyone? Okay, I'm just gonna try and pull this thing. Can someone help me, please. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. Brandon, I believe your if you want to use this, your character has the ability to use a token. To magically have um, <laughs> an item. Oh yeah. So if if you want like things that might I, be handy as a crowbar or uh, I think something I, like, I think I will. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you're I'll, you're doing you're using your earlier. Um. So I'll go I'm going down I'm down two. So uh, I can I, I could just pick whatever kind of just to have. Yeah. Yeah, so you're you're using your prepared strength, and you can spend two adversity tokens to just happen to have one commonplace item with you. Um, yeah, so I'll you know, uh, I guess have a small crit because they come in small size, but yeah. I'll have one of those with me, and okay. then I'll I'll just be like, oh wait a minute, guys, and I pull out of my backpack. Let's try this. <laughs> okay. I think I'm like I'm really like pulling on the board. I'm like, okay, why, why did you just say so earlier? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I I had to dig for it, okay? But here we have it. All here right. Uh, Lamont, give me a brawn check. The difficulty is going to be two because of Theo's crowbar help. So rather okay. low. Let's hope that's okay. I got two exactly. Oh, that's enough. That just means it. So you're, you're pulling and you kind of get caught off guard that it, as soon as he slips that crowbar in and pops it up it open, that nail releases and you kind of stumble back and you're able to, we'll say that check works for the rest of them. And there are three different boards that um, pull off. And now this door is exposed. It is old and weathered and uh, 
there's not even a door handle on it. It's just it is closed, but there's not a door handle. At this point, Cass will be like, "Oh, uh, it looks like the basement windows over here aren't boarded up. If we want to <laughs> go down there." <laughs> Wait, are you playing Cassandra or Bull? I don't <laughs> <laughs> Curse a straw joke. Uh, <laughs> She's very sick. Se- oh. Why? Why? Okay. I say to we Cassie. Open the front door. Let's go in. I say to Cassie, when were we going to mention this? And then I kick the door and hopefully it opens. Spooky front door, spooky basement. I'm going with the spooky front door. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if I, I kick it, does it open? Exits. Uh, so, all right. So remind, remind me, where is everybody? So Theo, you're at the door. Lamont, are you staying in front of the door? Yeah. Okay. Cass, are you kind of going, oh yeah, there's this over here. Is, is this like a, well, what's, is, is it like a extended porch that like wraps around or is it kind of just like a, you know, you, you like yeah, there's one, just like a, one oh, step up, one step up, no porch. Uh, well, she'd probably be on. I guess in the yard, right in okay. front of that little, right. like one step up, okay. pointing out the window. And then uh, Anya, where are you standing exactly? Uh, probably standing right next to Cass. Okay, so we got Theo and Lamont right in front of the door. We have uh, Cass and Anya off to the side. Um, as you're Theo getting ready to open that door, it shatters open into splinters, and the whole door just <laughs> kind of blows up in your face glass comes flying chunks of wood comes flying and a strange creature bounds out knocking you and lamont down and runs through you um so i need this is going to be a snap decision so this is not a planned action um i need this is going to be a difficulty five check it can either be flight it's going to be flight because you're getting out of the way i don't you could make a case to use brawn to like take on the brunt of this force coming at you but I imagine it's going to be flight. So you're going to give me a difficulty five flight check. And because it's a snap decision, you can't use adversity token. Nine. What does difficulty five mean in this case? So you want to get five or higher on your roll oh, of gosh. a flight check. Can uh, Cass take a uh, snapshot of this thing as it's <laughs> running at them <laughs> to try to blind this creature? Because I'm imagining it's like very dark out and like a a bright flash might momentarily stun it. I'll say because you have this, this heroic strength cast, um, you don't need the GM's permission to spend an adversity token to ignore fear. We'll kind of play around with that a little bit. And we'll say you're kind of in, you're very intuitive in this situation and you're going to do that. You're trying to blind the creature. Yeah. If, if, okay. if, if I can stun it whatsoever to like slow it down, perhaps. All right. I will will lower this DC uh, to three, so it we went from a five to a three. I, I rolled which is great because I rolled a three. So <laughs> oh oh, you s- <laughs> just made it. And then Lamont, you rolled a nine. A nine. So this is an actual encounter. So it's it's a little different. The defender, yeah. So Theo, how do you get out of the way? You just met it, so you're gonna tell me how you get out of the way. Does it does it knock us down? Uh, no, no Cassie, you, you were, Cassie you were able, flash. Yeah, you were able to kind of get out of the way of this. So you, you're not going to take any damage. You passed okay. your skill check. So you you I'm giving you narrative control on how that looks for Theo. I guess he would just like bound backwards and then kind of like fall on his back or something, and, but out of the way. He's just okay. like, oh, and then kind of scrambles up, up to his feet and just looks around and see it. He's just watching it go, you know. Okay. And then, uh, Lamont, you're able to succeed quite impressively. Uh, what does that look like for you as you're getting out of the way of this creature that's bounding out? Um, I think it looks like, you know how, um, when depending on who you're scaring, they react <laughs> more possibly violently all of a sudden, so they swing for it. Okay. And they pretend it was all part of their plan. So, yeah, I think... <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that other way, but and swings for the thing that jumped at him, and then okay, yeah, just jumps back as well. To see, all right, get out of the way. you take a swing, but this creature is moving so fast that you're not able to connect. And as you're swinging, it's just <laughs> right by you. This blur, this brown, uh, furry mound of a creature just bounding down the road, and immediately 
hard turn and bolts into the uh, cornfield as fast as it can. What the I fuck a, was that? I don't know, man. I wish I had my, uh, my, my slingshot out, you know? Are we still... I'm not going... Are we going after that thing? No, but like, wouldn't that have been cool? And then I brush myself off and get up and I say, how's everybody else doing? Cassie, you all right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, hold on. And she pulls out the picture and is like, you know, shaking it to try to ah. develop, <laughs> develop it, ah. see, what, see what they were looking at. Anya, like, thing leaning, is gone, leaning. right? Sorry, Anya. Yeah, Anya's like leaning over Cass's shoulder so she can see this picture because she's got it. Like, it was so fast. She's like, I don't even know what that was. Okay. Uh, so, Cass, as you're kind of, you know, doing the old Polaroid, shake it like a Polaroid picture, uh, it is, <laughs> it's coming more clear, and you're, <laughs> you see Theo's face comes first into view, and it's like this oh shit face, like, as he's moving out of the way and falling down, and over him is this humanoid creature and you can't really make out its face, but the outline of it, it does have a, a larger snout. And what is closest to you, the camera, and what is really the focal point, and what was most in focus, is this this clawed hand. Five-fingered clawed hand that is, like, swiping at the air coming through. So I go over, and I look over at the picture, too, and I go, Oh, a chupacabra. <laughs> A cheap, a cheap a what? Chupacabra, right, Cass? I don't, I don't think this is the, the cryptid that. Uh, that's not the same cryptid. This is something different, and maybe a, it might be. I don't want to say werewolf, but I don't not not want to say a werewolf. If that makes any sense? I a think we're dealing with werewolves. Chupacabra. I'm not going to rule it out at this point. <laughs> you know, I, I think the government was. You know, they were doing some hybrid testing of animals and they were trying to build a, you know, a, a being out here. <laughs> no, guys, you know what that looks like? It's my neighbor's dog. <laughs> no, it's not. It's what a five fingered hand. How is that a dog? I guess anything's Whatever possible that now that stuff's jumping out at it. My goodness. Do you guys think there's another one of those in there? As I hope not. Anya, as you're pointing in, that's when you hear coming out of, like, kind of spilling out of the uh, the doorway there. You hear some crying <laughs> and some sniffling. And <laughs> I go up to the door. I say, hello? So as you peek your head in, uh, you, you see... There's a lot of dust floating in the air, like as the, some of the moonlight kind of spills in through some of the cracks in the windows, you can see dust in the air. You see, uh, this is a living room, uh, and behind it, you see a little hallway going into the kitchen, and there's a couple doors off to the side. Uh, the interior of this house is just trashed, uh, and it looks like there's a fight in here. Um, most of the furniture is knocked over or splintered. Uh, you see the walls, and everything's just covered in claw marks. There's um, wallpaper that's being ripped off and it's kind of half hanging on the wall claw marks everywhere there are holes in the wall that allow you to see through other rooms and you can make out a bathroom and a, a dining room on this first floor and in the corner you see a small uh, girl crying in the corner of this living room I kind of get down on her level and I go what's wrong um, so I assume you got you walked in and got closer. I did. Okay. Any anybody else following? I'm I'm watching from the doorway. I I'm way too scared. <laughs> Cass, Cass will follow in, uh, kind of just taking shots. <laughs> okay. Around the room. Uh, All right. Uh, Anya's back with Lamont. She's not. Okay. All right. Uh. Cass, I think you're focusing on like the claw marks and like detailed scratches and stuff like that. Would that be safe to say? That and just trying to illuminate spaces where maybe um, okay. something might be hiding. Okay. Um, if I look around on the floor, do I see like wooden shards or anything sharper? Um, yeah, there are like broken pieces of furniture 
that mm-hmm. could I, I pick mean, one of them up? And because like because my character because Theo he's kind of think he's kind of thinking about that slingshot he's got and he's thinking maybe some something will come in handy for okay. self defense in the future. So, um, yeah, you find just, there are some shards of like broken furniture. There's like a a chair leg uh, that you could pick up, um, but there are some smaller splintered stuff. But you're able to gather up enough things yeah things yeah, yeah. okay and I, and I kind of stuff it in my back pocket and then okay. i keep going like you okay um yeah so as you get closer to her and kind of peek in and get down on her level um she's got long black hair and bangs that come down and it's just kind of like that shape her face her hair shapes her face um small child uh looks like she's been crying a lot like puffy eyes red cheeks She's wearing a pink onesie. <laughs> I do, I'm going to read it as written. Uh, she's wearing a pink onesie. Uh, I tried to imagine what that would be. So I'm thinking it's like a romper. We can say it's like a one piece romp. Like footy pajamas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I would assume they would write footy pajamas, but I'm going to say it's more like a romper <laughs> thing. Um, but that's it. Uh, you can't really tell how old she is, but it her size is about like a, equivalent to a six or seven year old. You would see these kids running around on the playground as um, you know, your schools are all packed in with the elementary schools as well. Um, and she does look up to you and you can see like eyes are red, just puffy. <sighs> who, who are you? She's looking at you. Theo. I, I slowly get my slingshot out and kind of ready one of the items I found on the floor. And I say, kind of pull it back, getting it ready. And I say, we're from the neighborhood. What's going? What's wrong? I do this, you know. Uh, I was in a, a fight with that that thing that burst through the door. You, you, you broke the seal and it got away. Are you hurt? Um, I don't. I don't. She kind of like feels around. No, I'm not. I'm not hurt. Well, come on out. We'll we'll take you home. And she, she kind of big gulp looks at you. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know where my home is, but I know that we need to find that thing and, and get it back here. Um, it went into the cornfields. We, we need to track it down. We need to uh, find it and get it back here. Why? I can't believe you let it out. What what is it? It's I mean, you saw it, right? It kind of ran right by you. Not really. <laughs> uh, we have a picture. Cass, do you have the picture? Yeah, Castle. Bring the picture over and can I um, can I spend an uh adversity token to see what this uh, <clears throat> Is this a little girl, a little boy? Little uh, girl. Can I see? Yeah, that's right. Uh, what are they? <laughs> what are you? Um, <laughs> I, I, she, there's something different about her. In what way? And this is, this is actually one of uh, Cassandra's feet. Okay. You have it's... to, you have to answer honestly. Um, we could spend an adversity token to ask the GM about the surroundings, an NPC, or the like. The GM must answer honestly. Oh, <clears throat> I know it's kind of like a massive cheat button. <laughs> oh, um, she does not. There's there's something as you are getting closer, and you snap a picture like over her shoulder, and your flash illuminates her face. You catch a weird complexion of her skin, and it is, it's it's grayish. Like Theo, you were having a hard time picking up because it's so dark in here. But uh, when when Cass lights that flash up, the the red in her cheeks goes away, and you can see this uh, a grayish sheen. Theo, say, hey guys, guys, what's going on in there? Are you are you okay? Are you dead? I think we've got a vampire. On our hands, <laughs> I I grab a I grab one of the pointed pieces of furniture 
and like kind of load up my slingshot. I'm like, don't worry, I am prepared. <laughs> I've got <laughs> and I, I start I've got garlic going like beef this. jerky as well. Hanya, who has been standing in the back, like seriously concerned because she's like, I can't let Theo be in there by himself. Like, we got a crazy person in there with him, and then whatever in the heck he's talking to. She's like, so she's like kind of started inching her way in. So I imagine that when they start saying vampire and stuff, she's like, <laughs> Don't stab a little girl. <laughs> uh. but, but then I call back, but this ain't a little girl. Uh, or I guess not. I I am a little girl. My name is Juniper. Who are you? D D Juniper. What are we? This this is in Oregon. Your name's this is Indiana. Your parents named you Juniper. <laughs> <laughs> I resent that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no offense, Oregonians. Uh, <laughs> All of it taken. <laughs> I, I, we need to get him back to this house, and I guarantee the other one got out. Oh no! What other one? What? Oh, jeez. The... Yeah. How did they get out? The we 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 just came in the front door. Only one one thing came out. The basement. The base. The basement's open, right? You broke the seal. And I guarantee it got out. Okay, so who can run 50 miles an hour? Show of hands. Let me check. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lamont, I mean, I'm pretty good at running. I, I think, Lamont, you, you're, you're kind of the hubris that you have as the, the school athlete would want to make that check. But you're also remembering the, the fail you had at the gate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm like, uh, um... <laughs> Just give me a. Uh, sometimes to stretch, warm up a bit, then I could run run a good decent decent speed. Um, I don't know what I don't know what other way to get these monster dog demon things back. So I'm I'm at a loss. I, I want to pause here and say, Khan, you did it again. He re he redeemed ten thousand channel points. Uh, he's going to be in charge of naming an NPC here. Uh, not in this game, but we'll we'll get with you. Uh, one of the local DMs here will get with you and uh, walk through that process with you, since you're the first one that has done it on our channel. Uh, Khan, we thank you again. Uh, and then just a quick note, again, Jen posted in the chat that Direct Relief is sending protective medical gear to healthcare workers throughout the states and the world. It is 80 different countries, all 50 states. Um uh, Jen says, all day I've been hearing about the overwhelmed hospitals and doctors and nurses and techs having to recycle their masks. Uh, yesterday we spent an hour digging up safety goggles from our garage because local hospitals had run out. So if you can give and donate and help protect these lives, uh, the folks who are fighting uh, for us and on those front lines, those EMTs, those doctors and nurses, uh, we'd really appreciate it. I know that we've blown out our stretch goal by three times. But again, if, if you're just joining the stream and, and you got some extra money that you can put towards that, uh, it's going to a good cause. It goes directly to direct relief and that gets that money out there. Um, so there's that. Uh, so PSA uh, done for that. And again, thank you everybody that's donated up to this point and will donate. Uh, we truly appreciate it. Back in game. Okay. Where were we? I forgot. We're trying to figure out who can run really fast and oh. catch that monster dog um, demon. Who's who's whoever's got a D twenty in brains? I think that's Cass. I think there's one other uh, that might me. be Theo. Yeah, I think me and Theo. Uh, you know that didn't. There's no way you can catch it at this point. It would take some serious tracking. Also, Chris, I think that was maybe Bob who wanted to name an NPC Khan. Oh, okay. Oh, well, uh, that's what we'll do. That's easy. Uh, cool. The new NPC's name is Khan, and that'll happen. And we did just get two more donations. Uh, Adam, thank you uh, for donating, as well as Gracie. Uh, again, thank you so much playing in a game and donating. Oh, um, I'm going to be donating D4 rolls to myself. Going to need them. Uh, so, Cass and Theo, you know that that thing bolted pretty quick and it was on um it was on a line and it was moving 
real fast. And I think Cass and Anya, I think you have this inner kind of tingle like we need a plan. So what would we be rolling for? Are we just trying to come up with a plan here? Or? Yeah, I don't I don't think you need to roll for anything yet unless you you kind of uh, narrate some stuff. I'm Okay. I'm just trying to fill in some of those blanks a little Cass bit. Cass will look to is is a little girl named Khan at this point? Or... <laughs> uh, yeah, well Juniper is now Khan. Oh yeah, sorry, it was Juniper. Uh... Khan. Uh, <laughs> is there a way that we can lure this this creature back into the back into the house or these creatures or because we obviously can't catch them. We got bikes. Or um, do we um, need a car? Gang? Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Lamont is not into stealing a car. No. <laughs> uh, um Khan turns and grabs your hand, Theo. And she, and she says, follow follow me. And she's going to pull you down the hallway. Uh, or at least try to. Uh, I kind of hesitate at first, and I look back at, at Cass, and I, with that ex- an expression that, that asks, should I do this? <laughs> and, and then I just keep going, I guess. All, all, all of you, come. come. I want to I show you something. Okay, guys. Um, we have to go now. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to... Go, um, before I go in, I want to pick up the board, one of the boards that was boarding okay. up the door, All right. and like just look at it because they said we broke the seal, and that's the only thing we took off. Is there like some kind of magical sigil on it? Um, so as you're picking up the, the three boards that uh, span the doorway, and you pull them out, you don't you don't see anything other than two nails in each board that were kind of holding it in the in the door jam in the threshold, uh, but no no magic. No kind of uh, any glowing anything. It's okay. it looks like a two by four. Um, I'm just gonna bring one of them with me to okay. have a weapon. All right. Yeah, you're able to grab one. We'll say this one was like broken in half, so it's it's about like three feet long, but it's got a nail on the end. Yeah. Uh, so you have kind of a, a spiked club at this point. Uh, and I imagine Lamont is you know yeah, kind of crouched down, <laughs> walking into this house. Uh, Anya, are you are you following? So she's going to run up and take Theo's other arm and like look at Juniper and just be like, no offense, but uh, you're a kid. You're kind of talking like a grown up. You're kind of a gray color. We kind of thought you were a vampire and you're kind of leading us into a dark, spooky house where there were some things in it. And you said you were fighting it, but you look like you're like six years old. So explain some stuff before we go with you because we ain't going with you until you until you explain. Thank she, God for Anya, or else I'd be dead right now. She grabs <laughs> Theo. She grabs your other hand. So now she's got both of your hands and is staring right at you. Okay. And she looks you in the eyes and she says, "This entire group has a special destiny, and that destiny can only be fulfilled if you work together." Guys, I knew it. Oh, Just no. like I told you. I told you today would be weird. Um, that's great, but we can handle this on our own, okay? And I try to take my hands out of hers and walk away. Or how successful am I? Okay, yeah, so that? you're you're pulling your hands out of her and turning around and heading towards the front of the door? Uh, is there like a... St- is this like... Is there a staircase that goes somewhere? Um, like, what's around? Tell me. There is a staircase that goes down. You can see that goes like to a basement, and then there's one that goes up. I want to take the one that goes up. I, I okay. want to approach it, um, and I look to the rest of the gang, and I'm like, "All right, guys, let's go. Up, let's go check up, check some of this stuff out." And I walk deliberately away from that juniper girl. It is person. now con. Con. It's not con. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So con, let your hands go. And and she kind of brings her hands to a resting position in front of her. There's nothing upstairs. Downstairs, there was something you might want to see. I, I thought I, I was taking you downstairs. 
I stop at the foot of the stairs and I look over and I'm like, come on guys. And I keep going up. On the back of the front door is, is there some sort of like, I guess, demon circle or <laughs> sigil that is blocking them in? The is front that what we broke. The front door itself has been shattered except for they're, they're like pieces that still have the hinges that are connect to the jam that are still there and just kind of like hanging, but there's no front door left. Okay. Yeah, and it wasn't us that shattered. It was the, it was the, yeah, it was that, the creature coming right, out. Right, it broke it out. So it was already uh, broken. Well, gang, let's, you know, let's Scooby do this thing. Split up. <laughs> uh, who wants and, to go upstairs? Who wants to go downstairs? And I, and I turn from like about midway up the staircase and I go like this and I go, just like I just said and then I wave and I'm like <laughs> okay and then I keep going up the stairs yeah so the stairs go up like five steps and then turn and come back up and there's a little hallway upstairs um and you see just some doors a small hallway three three doors is it like dark enough that I can't see anything in there you can or? see are the so, three doors down or <laughs> <laughs> wrong decade? <laughs> this is the eighties, man. Um, this is three dog night. Uh, <laughs> um, so I got, <laughs> I, I try and open the first door. What happened? All right. Yeah. You see a bedroom, same dust everywhere. There's you know, dust particles in the air that are being picked up by the, the moonbeams that are coming into the light. Um, an old bed, just kind of some, old furnishings of what was a bedroom, like a and spare bedroom. I, I go down and I open the second. Yeah, you see a bathroom. And then I open the third door. And then that's like a master bedroom. And uh, is that the end of the hall? Yeah, yeah. Uh, do I see anything on the walls, like paintings or weird no, etchings, it, markings? Kind of like the, the things that would have been, like the trinkets that would uh, show who lived here have all been removed. There's just some basic furniture, um, not tore up like it, it is downstairs, but. Um, so nothing here. So I, I, I say that to myself. I'm like, huh, nothing here. I turn around and okay. go and go back down the stairs. Okay. And at the foot of the staircase, do I see everyone still in the foyer or whatever? Uh, what was everyone else doing while Theo went upstairs? We'll see. I was just staring hard at the little girl. Just making sure it's not doing anything, anything, anything weird. I'm not, I'm not above whacking a ghost girl with a <laughs> piece of wood. Okay, she's just kind of standing there in that same hallway that she was trying to get Theo to come down. She hasn't really moved yet. Uh, Anya's gonna be trying to level with Juniper. Like, what are you gonna show us? Like, I'm not gonna just follow you down into this uh, spooky basement. Like, you, you, you're, you're a six year old. Like, what's going on? That. There's just more information down there. I was going to show you more about the other. So I I appear at the foot of the staircase and I, um, I say, Zoinks, guys! Like there ain't nothing up here. Let's go like the ghost girl said. <laughs> and I go down the stairs. Oh. And, I, and I... Go ahead. Well, is there any like food in the kitchen? Is there like uh, some canned? Is there like spam or beans <laughs> or whatever? Yeah, you, we... <laughs> you walk into the kitchen. It's the same kind of mess that was out in the living room. Everything's tore up. There's a stove that's been pulled out and is, uh, you know, face down. Um, cupboard doors are half of them are ripped off. Uh, no refrigerator, uh, but you can't find any remnants of anything. Okay. Does it smell like gas? Because I'm assuming it's a gas uh, stove. No, no gas. Okay. Well, I guess we're we're not gonna die of gas, um, like the third family that lived in this household. But <laughs> I I don't know. What do we should we go downstairs? I guess this vampire wants us right. down there. Why do you keep saying like that? Why do you keep saying it's not it's not vampire? <laughs> What? How do you say vampire? V vampire. Pie. Well, that's, pie. That, that's all wrong. And and uh, castle break like two table legs and kind of hold it like a like a makeshift cross. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'm ready. And then I pull out my slingshot and I go, I'm ready. 
And then I turned to Juniper or or uh, uh, Con. 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 <laughs> and I said, you, Pray tell, you spoke of secrets down yonder. Yeah, well, I'm trying to get you to come down there. And go down there we shall. Come just, on, lads. Just because it's a vampire doesn't mean you gotta talk to it like this is the Middle Ages. <laughs> I, yes, I do. I, I'm not I must, a vampire. But you're, you're a vampire. vampire. <laughs> no, 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 vampire. I'm. She turns around and starts heading down, and then opens this one door that has some stair a stairwell going down. Comes in and heads downstairs, kind of out of sight of everyone now. But she's moving downstairs. Thou fiend of ashen gray veneer, and I go follow her. She didn't answer that question. Cass will just walk forward with the the makeshift cross. I'm assuming uh, we're gonna die today. <laughs> oh. I guess we're following the not vampire into the basement to find out information about a, a werewolf. I don't know. Let's go, guys. Wherever it was, and, I nearly died. And uh, the- you can go. F- I'm staying up here. And from from down the stairs, you you hear Theo call like, "Come on, guys!" And as you're there, kind of looking, talking back to your group, and looking down the stairs, she gets down at the base and then turns and and she dis she doesn't disappear, but she disappears from your sight, um, because like where the stairwell is and the the floor above you kind of cuts it off. She goes into this basement. Khan does, yeah. Excuse me. Um, if I follow her, what happens? Uh, you you go down the stairs and you see her standing uh, in the center of this basement room. <sighs> and there there are um, there's a, a carcass kind of in the center of this room. It looks like it has been ravaged. Um, and she says, "This." She points down to it. This is what I wanted to show you. Just needed you to come down and see it for yourself. Oh God! Now I'm a vegetarian. I look around, and it's just a carcass. I say it's just a carcass. This, this is what that beast was feasting on, and it is now. This is gone. It is gone, and it is now looking for a new feast. That is why we need to get it back into this house. Well, I've got beef jerky. Um, it's garlic flavored, so you might <laughs> want to stay away, Khan. Uh, but if it'll help get these these monsters back in, I, I'll gladly donate it. It's it was pretty expensive though. Like I don't know, eighties price is like two dollars a jerky <laughs> stick. <laughs> That's like seven dollars today. Um, it. It took me forever to get it in this house, and you broke the seal and let it out, and together we can get it back. How? Well, uh, I mean, how do you catch animals? I assume you hunt, or have hunted, or have heard of hunting. I assume you have tracked, um, trapped, I mean traps guns and, but i mean we're just kids here i mean we could run it over maybe if we have a car have you looked at us <laughs> like, you... top the stairs. no <laughs> have you have you looked at us because i i don't know how you get that from just from all this she walks over to uh theo and grabs the arm that you cut earlier and pulls up your sleeve because uh live bait is an option and oh um, kind of smears some blood across your your forearm um, whose blood? Mine, Cass. Apparently, I say, oh, yeah. kind of shaking also, in fear a little bit. Also, Khan, you said we broke the seal, but like the the boards were on the outside of the door. So what? Until you, those, did somebody seal you in with them, or are you just like some magical being where you did the government lock you in here? <laughs> how did how did this all go down? Why, how are you fighting these things? You never answered that question. I mean, I've got loads of questions. Have you? <laughs> she, what witchcraft is this? <laughs> As 
you're saying this. <laughs> her, right, hand, sign. her hands start to glow red. Uh, she raises up her right hand. And this pulse of red, fiery energy comes flying out and hits the back wall of this basement that is the stone or like brick and mortar wall. And it just kind of poof, explodes. I think I'm literally just about to start going down the stairs and I hear that and I just scurry right back upstairs. <laughs> yeah, Lamont, as you're coming down, you can see like the room light up, this red fiery glow. And then almost as fast as it lights up, it just goes away and back to dark. So your eyes are kind of like they got like a camera flash and you're kind of adjusting. Are, are you, <laughs> you what back happened? Up. Are, you, are, are you dead? What, ha what does happen? <laughs> I need this monster back. Okay. But how? That also doesn't answer the question how you locked yourself into the place with hammers and nails. And you got those fiery red powers. Why don't you go get it? Mm -hmm. What she said. Again, destiny you has brought us together. And it is destiny to get it back. I I, that. And while she's like, looks like a six-year-old, She's using kind of an elevated tone and diction where she is. She's not coming off as a six or seven year old. It's like, can I be any more clear? <laughs> All right. Well, oh, yeah. time out, guys. Con did it again. Thirty dollars uh, in the bucket. Uh, again, I, I just my Adam, you wrote it in chat. Uh, my heart is growing three times, three sizes this day. Um, that's crazy, man. Uh, oh, you're, again, you're appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So, she shot a fireball out of uh, her fist, and we're wondering I, what's going on. Yeah. We I need... think she was about to just show us this like sweet uh cherry roadster that she had in the garage that we could drive <laughs> through the cornfield. <laughs> I, I do not have access to a cherry roadster. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what about bicycles? What about a motorcycle? That's right. We are kids on bikes. We can do this, right? Do we have rope, chains, whips? Why do you say it like that? Why do you say it like that? <laughs> that is a good question. I just like, um, I have no idea what he's talking about, but how are we going to ride a bike through a cornfield? Um, I have. Nice true. I have a mountain bike, so it can run over. <laughs> a, yeah, you. A we can we can ride down the rows. It's just if you go against the grain, then you're gonna be looking at trouble. This, what season? What season is? Wait, September. It's, it's yeah, it's early fall. Okay, so um, yeah, those those corn stalks are gonna be sharp, my friends. It is going to feed. Is there a farm or a forest nearby? Someplace. It can get another one of those, and she points down to the uh, the carcass that is in the middle of the floor. Uh, yeah, uh, there's. Uh, this is a farming town, farming community. Uh, so, as well as cornfields, there are farms that just have like some general livestock, uh, pigs, you know, goats, cows. There is a glen of trees, like a forest that is on the other side of a cornfield that might have access to deer and other kind of uh, woodland creatures. Well, I mean, if we need. Food. I think um, I can talk to old Mister Bailey, the science teacher. We're, we were supposed to dissect pigs next week. I'm sure he's already got them. We can just rob. Well, not rob, but we can uh, liberate Mister Bailey of all his dead piggies <laughs> and maybe trap a werewolf. How many pigs do you think we can carry? Can we only need one. Have we have we identified what kind of carcass it is on the ground? No, nobody, nobody asked. Anya's gonna go look at it and try to decipher what kind of carcass this is. All right, uh, as you're doing that, Anya, I want to shout out to Gracie. Uh, Twenty more dollars in there. Uh, Jen, Jen oh, says, yeah. "Hell yeah, Gracie," and I say the same. I agree. Uh, thank you, Anya. You're going down and looking at this carcass. Um, what's your? Get to your character sheet here. I'm trying to how how versed are you in? <laughs> 
in carcasses. I, I don't have much experience in carcasses. You have you know. pretty good. You have pretty good grit, though. So you do. You're able to kind of get in there and kind of pick up its mouth and and look at it. Um, give me a grit check. That is, I'm going to give a low DC. I'm just making sure we don't have any critical fails here. I'm going to make a DC of three. So it should be pretty easy with your D20. But you never know. Uh, I got a seven, so. Oh, close. Uh, you do feel dinner kind of start to come up as you're opening it up, but you're able to just like, nope, hold it together on you. You can do this. And you you kind of lift its head up and look at it, and it used to be a pig. It's a pig, guys. Don't worry. It's not a human. Oh, well, perfect. I mean, if we get a bunch of pig babies, maybe that's what they have a sweet tooth for. Sweet tooth? Is that the right expression? I don't know. <laughs> a hankering. <laughs> hankering. <laughs> Whatever we do, we need to do it now. Guys, we just hit $1,000. Holy Woo! shit. Woo! I can't. Like I don't even know what I to do here. Like I could feel my 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 heart dropped in a good way, and like there was no effing way I woke up this morning thinking we were going to raise a thousand dollars. This just goes to show how awesome the community is, and how uh, we can kind of band together with a a small channel like this and and get get stuff done and and get some money out there. So again, appreciate everything that is coming this way. Um, we will not let you down. <laughs> oh, okay. So Khan says, whatever we have to do, we do it. If it's baby pigs, if it's live bait and setting up a trap, we have to get this thing back in the house. Well, I mean, I don't know if we have time to go grab the Baby pigs, if Theo, if you're already cut, how about you just ride on the back of my bike and we just ride through the cornfields and then, yeah, I don't know. Anya Lamont, you flank us on a different row, and if this thing shows up, we just You just you just put your hands together and like made a fist and clapped it and I think you're trying to say we're gonna fight it. And I'm, I I'm think... still upstairs. I'm like, what you want us to fight it? Yeah, but yeah, Lamont, will you come down here? There's nothing nothing scary except for this creepy kid and I guess a dead pig, but Okay. Come on. There's down. nothing scary except for creepy <laughs> kids. And a, okay. Fine. Yeah, I'm coming down. Well, I, I don't know. Theo, I, for once, Theo was right, and we've been tasked to do something that is bigger than us, so we have to go out there and apparently fight a cryptid, which is <laughs> is or may not be a werewolf. And I think maybe we can do it with this little fucking creepy kid Khan's help. <laughs> uh you're Theo, you're muted. <laughs> Whoopsie. I knew that all along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Two things on the agenda. One, I write more than once in a while, guys, okay? And two, what if whilst I was riding on the back of someone's bike, bleeding arm into I had my projectile. Right, I had, I had this. I pull out my slingshot and the little shard of wood. I could try and shoot it, guys. What do you think? What do you think, Kat? One, can you not call your slingshot a projectile? That sounds wildly <laughs> I don't know, just inappropriate for the strength of the weapon. But yes, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I Fine, think. a thing with which to lob projectiles. How about? That? Yes, much much better, much better, much better. <laughs> Good, but I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. What What about the rest of you guys? Honestly, oh, oh, suicidal. I'll cut myself a little bit too if everybody else is. In Wait, oh. um, <laughs> I've never met two people in my life willing to be bait. <laughs> Me neither, and I'm starting to understand why everyone says I should stay away from you guys. Now. <laughs> 
if you I, if you put yourself up as bait, you are a hundred percent more likely not to die. I don't believe that, that. is facts. That's, that does not Based make on... sense. Based on Based on a you, punch. Have you ever seen a movie? Like usually the person who's like, Hey, I'm running this way, everybody look at me. They always live at the end. <laughs> we're basing, so we're gonna we're risking our lives on a movie. Well, yeah, because you know who puts out movies? Big Brother, and you know what they base that on? Real things. They put they base these things on stuff because they don't want you to do it. They don't they 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 make tropes for a reason, so you don't do the tropes, so that way you end up dying. Nay, <laughs> we are ba- basing our actions this day. The concepts of art. Of of the majesty of the theater. This is a grand story. Yeah, I get. It, yeah, I'm I'm now. going along Great with it as long as you just shut up. <laughs> oh boy, I. <laughs> and, and then I turn to Cassie with the, with a high five, <laughs> ready to go, and I'm like, "We did it!" And I high five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think this is the moment where we can kind of pause and 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 speak out of character, um, but think in character. What do you want to do? Because your task is to go get this creature and bring it back. What do you want to do, and how do you want to approach it? Um, I, I kind of want to like stand on the back of someone's butt and then just kind of like do a T pose with my like my bleeding arm sticking out, and I'm like, "Here, doggy, doggy, doggy," just do stuff like. That. Okay. What, what if we correct. left like blood like on the corn stalks that would lead it back this direction? Okay. Ooh, there we go. I want to put more nails into my weapon. <laughs> because I'm not ready to Practical. die. Practical. <laughs> All right. Um, I would like to look for, are there chains around? Like, was the fence chained up? Or was there, like, I don't know, just any type of chainery that I could maybe there, tie somebody up with? There is not. Um, again, all, like, the, the individual items are taken out of this house. It's more like furniture and just bigger stuff. Um, so there isn't any chain. Um, Lamont, we can say if you borrow um, Theo's crowbar multi-tool, you could definitely get some more nails and get them added to your your club. Uh, um, yeah, I definitely want to do that. Okay. No chains. Plan of putting blood on the corn stalks. Uh, oh, yeah, and we need to actually kind of Get in the house and keep it in the house. So, um... And Khan comes in. Once it's in the house, I will be ready for it this time. You just get it back in here. Cass oh, will okay. open up a bunch of her the beef jerky that she has and put them in the kitchen. But <laughs> Khan, stay away. This is, this is garlic, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a vampire. It's not a vampire. You admitted it. Vampire. vampire. What are you doing? <laughs> the, the this weird gray thing must have the right pronunciation for it. So, vampire uh, it is. It's canon. It's canon. <laughs> um, I uh, Khan pipes up and says, "I this creature, it eats a lot." <clears throat> so. I, I don't think anybody is safe. I think the task would now would be the time. Uh, let's let's get on with this, I guess. Oh so, my god! So, it's, no. Sorry, go ahead. Have we already established the plan. Can I just hand uh, Lamont my crow? Yeah, we, we'll say that kind of happened. Lamont is uh, putting nails into his. Uh, his wooden board. Um, you guys are planning everything else. So do we, a... uh, so do we want to, does Lam- do Lamont and I want to wait so we can like put the boards back up on the door or something? Potentially. Hmm. Not. Hmm. Like wait in the bushes beside the house or like, do we want to, because I, I think us you being out in the cornfield, I think us uh, being out in the cornfield isn't going to work. Okay. Yeah. That's extra. a definitely plan. Um, our very own Jen just donated ten dollars, uh, just purely for Adam's comment about tropes being a conspiracy to get people dead. 
<laughs> so because of your role play, uh, we're again ten dollars. Thank you, Jen. Um, you could definitely like be the ambushers at the house to then close up shop. Yeah. Um, okay. And then so we're we're looking at Cass and Theo on a bike, Lamont and Anya at the house. Before we go out there, is there? I know eighties. So is there a phone in the house, or is there a phone <laughs> on like? Is there a payphone outside, or are there neighbors around? There are a f- few houses. As this is like the older part of town, the houses are further apart. Uh, there's more yard in between. So there are houses that are neighbors to this, but they are separated by a, a good yard or two. You know, um, you know that there was a payphone down by the the bus stop. Okay. We uh, think a call. I mean, do we want to call the cops? Oh, now we call the cop. Now. I mean, um, yes, please. And tell them. Well, I guess we can't say that there's a werewolf, but we can say that you know somebody's being murdered at the old house on Poplar Grove Road. You can do that. Boulevard Drive. <laughs> <laughs> Boulevard Drive. <laughs> I, I'm. I will call the police if I need it. I will do that. Actually, are you get doing some that? firepower? Yes. Okay. Um. I. I should. I should say since this is coming up, uh, you know the police officer, the sheriff in town, and he. He's not actually the sheriff of Hebron. He kind of like comes and goes, drives through every now and then. But he is the highest authority that you would know. Um. Pretty good guy, but he has been known to be complacent in his job. And he doesn't oh. really, maybe, probably won't respond to something like this. Uh, a kid calling him. Especially if you took the, the route of spooky noises at the end of Poplar Court. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I would probably okay. say that. Um, oh, what would I say, actually? <laughs> um, I'd say there's a breaking. Someone's breaking in. All right, so you said that there's other houses. Yeah. So I say that someone I saw someone breaking into one of the other houses, the ones that actually have someone occupying them, just to okay. get some police at least in the vicinity of um, the abandoned house. <laughs> okay. So you're going to do that while Cass and Theo go out, and then you'll go run down um, and do that, and then come back with Anya. Uh, I think it'll be part of the preparation. So like right after I finish putting the nails into the board, I'll just okay, run down. All right. The corn. Okay. So I can get some time to actually arrive. Yeah, so you book it down to the corner, down to where that bus stop is. Uh, do you have any change? <laughs> or, oh, I, don't I believe you could. <laughs> going back to my earlier days when I used to have to call collect to my parents to come pick me up after practice, I think you could call nine one one for uh, no no charge on there. So if that's, I think that's the route we're going. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you, yeah, you dial nine one one. Dispatcher does pick up. Uh, brief conversation. We'll uh, we'll have Officer Michaels is en route. He is the in the next town over, so it might be a bit. Uh, are you in any immediate danger? Uh, I'm I'm not, but I think whoever is in the house maybe, and I just have to do my part to at least prevent something from going really wrong. Okay, Officer, like I said, Officer Michaels is on the way. Do you need to stay on the line? Uh, do do you need me to? Uh, usually, yes, we have people stay on the line just so that we can stay in contact. Cass will be oh. screaming in the background if they're not. <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> ah, <laughs> broke. They're breaking in right now. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can stay. I really don't want to get involved any okay. more than I already am. I'm, okay. I'm 15. This guy could probably kill me. All right, I just uh, can't afford just... to get it, please. Stay out of sight. Um, lock yourself wherever you're at. Uh, Officer Michaels is on his way. Hey, thank you, thank you. Okay, and, I, and then yeah, yeah, she she disconnects with you. And all right, so Officer Michaels is on his way. Uh, what's the next move here? I charge out the door and uh, find Cass's bike, and then I'm like, oh, "Let's go, let's do it." All right, uh, you wanna. You want to ride on my my pe- 
on the back seat, or you want to you want to pedal? I can I can I can. What are those seat. things that stick out of the the pegs? Pegs. Was that a yeah. thing in the eighties? Yeah. Either you have pegs or you have a banana seat. <laughs> <laughs> I think banana seat was probably I'm going, I'm going the thing. For, uh, so yeah, Cass, you're no, in the. No, I mean, like, I'm going for those like the pegs that stick out because you could actually like. Stick. So yeah, are, so like, legit. they're they're not like the legit pegs that you aftermarket addition to your to your huffy. They're just like the the little nuts that hold the wheel on, so your feet are oh. kind of like barely hanging on. Uh, but there is a banana seat, so there is it's a two seater. Um, I guess I'll grab that extra seat. All right, <laughs> or whatever. That'll up, partner. All uh, right, hold on. Yeah. Sorry, right. so, so where are you going? Are you going into the cornfield? Oh yeah, we're going okay. off roading. All right. That's legit. Give me. Both of you, give me a grit roll. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, let me consult the table to see a good uh, target here. A task for successful. Uh, let's go six. Oh, I rolled a this seven. Is, this is planned action, so you can do... Um, I'll allow adversity tokens. Um, I want I want to use my prepared ability but i'm not quite sure what item dig up for use okay um, um i would say for you since you're riding on the back you would want to put a jacket on because those corn oh, okay. stalks are going to like cut across you so if you put a jacket on um i'll lower the dc for you down to five okay well i'll do that then i'll on a grit I'll, roll yeah and then cash your grit roll is to keep up the pace like can you keep yeah. pedaling through this and we could it's argue it could six... be brawn if you want no no let's not argue okay. that uh, <laughs> and it looks like somebody actually gave Cass a d4 but <laughs> go ahead and oh, wow. roll the two of those oh wow i'll, I'll say convenient it, for this system we'll add a an adversity token like so you can use that so plus one to your roll okay okay that works does that work okay uh, I'm gonna add, go ahead and add another adversity token, and I got exactly a four. <laughs> okay, yeah, you hit a couple big dirt clods that uh, you know weren't fully tilled when the tractors came through for the planting. Uh, it kind of like shakes your hands a little bit on that front tire as it hits, but you kind of get right back in it, and you're driving and you're moving. Um, you you see after a little bit, the field kind of opens up, and and you find the path where this this creature was running through. So it's a little easier uh, going as it now has opened up in the head. You do see a, a grove of trees that, that this goes directly for it. Okay. Uh, Theo start making noise. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we're going to draw this thing I'll, out somehow. I, I kind of like stand up on the seat and I just start like screaming. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> do, do your Macbeth monologue. You know it by heart now. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, I don't know any Macbeth off the top of my head. We're all actors on a stage. Um, there's something like that in there. Uh, <laughs> so you, as as Cash, you're just pedaling, and and Theo, you're on the back screaming. Um, ah! at, th at this point, Lamont and is back, touching base with uh, Anya. What, what are you guys doing? Yeah, um, the police, hopefully, is going to be coming in a bit, but apparently they're in the town over, so it's going to be a bit before they actually arrive. Did they go already? Yeah, they're gone. Oh, okay, um, okay. Is, the, is Con still inside the building? Uh, is, I assume so. Yeah, Con did not leave. I, I'm going to put my head in. I'm like, why couldn't you? Can't, can you leave? Just a question. Is hey, Con! Hey, can... Con! Can you leave? <laughs> I can, like, yes, I can leave. Oh, okay. Cool. And do you, like, shot an energy blast, right? Uh, that, was, yeah. that was you, that was it. So, yeah. Wouldn't it have been, like, helpful if you went with them? They. Didn't ask me to. Oh. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trap. 
crap. Um, <laughs> should I? Uh, yes, please. They don't have any weapons. The most armed person here is me, and I have a piece of wood with nails in it. Okay. If you, you could help them. Um, and at that, when you ask her to do that, she does stand up, kind of like strains out her onesie. <laughs> and she starts running. And she is fast. Like, you can see as she goes to push off with her leg, you see her leg almost go metallic in color and the, the muscles totally like flex. And it's no longer like a undefined six year old's leg, right? It's like now this muscular piece. And she starts bolting, same path that um, Lamont and, or not Lamont, sorry, Theo and Cast took. And she is just running. And super fast. Not as fast as the creature, but pretty fast. And she's going to catch, try to catch up with them. She would be great on the basketball team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the other teams would really appreciate a six-year-old with uh, uh, some sort of weird mutant ability on the team. Um, it would be great. She probably has some mad ups. <laughs> um. Anya and Lamont, what do you want to do in a, a, pr- a preparation for the return? I, I have an idea. Like... Oh, go ahead. I, um, to be honest, it's just honestly more nails just to scare it all <laughs> on the ground. Like okay. in front of the, not in front of the door, but on the inside of the house. So that if we do get in, it doesn't try to run straight out again. It, at okay. least something. Okay. Enter and slow it down. All right. Uh, Anya, what would you be doing? Um making sure we had boards i guess to to go back up on the door okay once like whatever boards we pulled off this should theoretically still have the nails on them okay and we have the crowbar we can hit it with hit the nail okay yeah so you're kind of getting uh the the boards prepped lamont's got his his pseudo his makeshift club okay all right um Theo and uh, Cass, as you guys are, Cass, you're just pumping hard. You see Juniper come up right next to you and is just kind of running and looking at you. They said you needed help. Oh, shit. Yeah, Khan, I got I got something for you. And she'll reach in her backpack and hand Khan a uh, Rubik's Cube that is unsolved at this point. Can you <laughs> really, really really stuck here if you can figure that out <laughs> <laughs> you did this while you were riding a bike <laughs> that's oh awesome good it's wonderful <laughs> oh, is, it, is it anything like does she like make it a bomb or something is it something you <laughs> no it's just a Rubik's cube um so as she's running she's doing it like three seconds later she puts it back in your backpack <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I was like, I I attempt to intercept and I grab the Rubik's Cube and I place it in my, uh, my little slingshot. <laughs> I'm like, like, don't worry, guys. And I prepare and I take it. <laughs> All right. Just out into the distance. At this time, you are getting close to that edge of the cornfield and where the, the trees meet this field. Um. What do you guys want to do? One, right. I knew she was a vampire because only vampires could do that, solve that while running. Uh, I don't know. Should we, should we cut yourself a little more? You want to cut yourself a little more? A little more blood? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, do you have a pocket knife? That's... Give it to me. I'm still bleeding. I, you know? Look. And I show her the wound. Well, I mean, we're chumming the waters here. We might as well add more chum. I don't know what the old sailor expression is. Oh, gross. Again, all right? oh. <laughs> old decaying fish notwithstanding, I think we should just like continue to explore the cornfield. Maybe it's out there. Or where's the nearest pig? Where's that? Where's the nearest pig? Well, you've, you've traveled through this this broken down corn stalks where this beast had run through and you're at the edge of the cornfield that meets the forest. And, and it kind of, you could see a couple broken branches like it kept going in to the forest. 
That's our way, gang. All right, I'll keep keep Who? pedaling that way. Charge! Who is he speaking to? He said gang. It's just the three of us. Well, three people could be a gang. Oh. Don't don't be reductive. It's okay. fine. Ain't you guys um, ever seen Scooby? I'm I'm just Fred, <laughs> man. I'm, I'm Fred all day. Long. As you guys are, are you could how are you continuing into the woods? I think it would be tough to ride your bike in there, just because there's a lot of undergrowth and it's not like this manicured path. Okay, well, w once it became unrideable, he would hop off, and do we we don't have a flashlight. Do we have any like source of light? Hey, Con, can you make your hands glow and so we can <laughs> see the path? That would be ill-advised if we were trying to sneak up on this creature. Well, I don't think we were trying to sneak up on it. We just were screaming the whole way down here. Oh, okay. And I'll scream again! <laughs> and she <laughs> she lights up her hands. Um, do, on second thought, do any of you have a way to make fire? <clears throat> I mean, like, I've seen some You do! Use... Well, that's... <laughs> A blast! I can't. <laughs> can't you light something on fire with that blast? Theo, aren't you like an Eagle Scout? Can't you rub sticks together? Or... <laughs> we don't have that kind of time. That takes a lot of time. <laughs> like, can't you f magically find something useful? Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I heard not her... with the number of adversity tokens. <laughs> her hands oh. start to light up. I've got two adversities. Soft glow. I could, I could let you. Oh, see, see, she's the fire chair. I cannot. There we go. I cannot hold it like this for very long without releasing it. I grab, I, I grab a stick off the ground, and I, I got you, and then I stick it in her palms okay. that are now ablaze, and it, it kind of starts to light the end of that stick on fire. You now have a soft glow, and she releases the power out of her hands. And then I take the stick that's on fire and I go, hell yeah. All right, let's go. Okay. So you guys are walking through. Um, this will be a planned action. So how do you want to move through these woods uh, to figure out your way here? By foot. Okay. Any <laughs> particular <laughs> manner? Sorry. I'd like to Sorry. also get another uh, stick lit on fire if possible. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you just feed it off of uh, Theo's. Yeah. Okay. Do we want to make like a a line like we're we're searching? Or are we doing single file? We're not on a trail, right? No, it's just kind of wooded area. Yeah. And as you guys uh, take your first few steps in and start to make this plan, you do hear a howl. And ooh. as you kind of look deeper into the woods, you can see the silhouetted figure of that beast. I've got a bad feeling about this. I have got a slingshot, and I take aim at it, yes. and I go over to cast. Yes. Should I? Absolutely. <laughs> I've already said yes like five times. Go. Cool. So I take like a stick, and I have one of those sharpened sticks, pieces of furniture. Okay. I load it up, and I right. take aim, and I fire the beast. Okay. Give me a fight roll. Oh, that's terrible. We'll What's say the... DC seven. As you're um, trying to like, it's it's got a ways to go. Um, my fight is a D four. <laughs> oh well. Uh, oh, no. This is a planned action, so you can use adversity tokens. I have one, and cool under pressure would not help me in this case because it says take half of the die's value. Two is far less. So. Yeah, that's not good. Is it, um, um, is it possible for Cass to take the uh, slingshot from him and say, hold on, let me... It's 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 my Rubik's Cube. Let me go ahead and do this. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Uh, yeah, so... And you have a D12, right, Cass? I do. All right, and I said it's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if it's planned, I'm going to go ahead and do the half and okay. add a adversity token. Okay. So it's seven exactly. So exactly at seven. So you rear back this sling, and you got this Rubik's Cube perfectly figured out, like solved, that the face of the yellow side is looking right at you. 
and you let it fly and it's going end over end and it goes up just as this creature's standing up and like howling and banging at the moon it hits its shoulder and those cubes just explode everywhere and it looks in your direction lets out another howl and is going to start running at you as fast as it can which color side of the cube hit him like red (laughs) yellow (laughs) uh is blue blue's a side right i I believe so yes okay blue (laughs) and cast would be like all right, I, th- I, th- I think we got our bait. Let's let's go, go. Okay. Uh, this is a snap decision to run out of here. Give me a nine flight check. Oh, it's going to be kind of difficult. Woo! We, might, we might have an encounter here. It's a D6. Uh, that ain't got- <laughs> and it's a snap decision, so you can't use... That's a Uh-oh. 10. Maybe. Adam Ow. gets a 10. How are you... So yeah, it's snap decision. So I don't think uh, Theo, you're going to be able to get on the bike and and you know ride uh, um, Cass's roll all the way to home. Well, not, especially not because my what was it flight roll is a D six. So yeah, you're that's not going to make not it. Even possible. Yeah, no. so you do earn it and a token, adversity token, because you fail. Um, well, if you alrighty. roll if you rolled a six, it. We can have exploding dice. Actually, I have exploding oh, dice. Oh, shit. I totally forgot. That's can, a I, whole thing. can I lend dice to somebody? So if did I, you... Mine blew up because I rolled a 10. Yeah, you can roll again. And it, it, the, the outcome becomes more favorable. favorable. Sorry, <gasps> man. I totally forgot about the exploding dice. That's another dice. 10. I rolled two 10s. Okay, roll can another can... one. Uh, Brandon, did you roll a D... You rolled a 6 on a D6? Yes. Yeah, roll it again. It explodes. Exploded. I'm so, I totally forgot this mechanic. Hell yeah. And this was a nine, so you need a four. I got a one. Oh, Oh, rotten. I know it. Well, if I have a 20 overall, can I give him a couple of points? Let me double check. All right. Please. Apparently I'm useless. There could be some unexpected positive results from a successful success of this degree. I'm going to say, Cass, you're able to get Theo by the scruff of his shirt get them on your banana seat and you're booking out of there. So you're both will use your role because it exploded twice to get Theo on your bike. And now you are pedaling and pushing fast. Um, Khan is running up with you as this werewolf. I don't want to say werewolf. We don't know that that's what it is. As this creature starts barreling its way down to you, you are booking hard. Um, you are now in the field, running fast. This thing is trying to keep up with you. Uh, let's do one more, and this will be one more, um, what did I say, flight check of a nine. And Cass, you're the only one that has to roll it since, uh, Theo, you're uh, on the back. Okay, fuck, fuck, oh, Theo. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, can, you do, can you do anything for me right now? I, I can <laughs> shoot stuff. It's a snap decision, so. That's a, uh, shit, that's a seven. Um, I only have one thing to add. Uh, it's a seven. Okay. Uh, so what's going to happen here is, um, we're going to go, this is going to be an encounter. So, uh, Theo, what I need is a flight check from you. Okay. And this is our first encounter. I gotta, I gotta kind of catch back up here. How do I do this? You're going to give me, you're going to give me a flight roll. So whatever your flight dice is versus my fight roll so does that make sense so you're gonna uh, roll your your flight dice and then tell me what you got so i got a five on that one. Ooh, i rolled a 10 um on a d10 so it explodes oh so no. i rolled a four no. so 14 you rolled a what a five. Ooh, dude theo you might not make it back yeah, for that's, episode that's two not, that's not good oh, oh no the attacker's oh, no. roll Sorry, guys. <laughs> was greater by seven to nine. Well, gang. Give me give me a grit check at five. Oh, we'll that's way you, better. Okay. We'll see if you hang on. Eight. Okay. So you're hanging on to cast enough that this claw comes down over you and it cuts your back and it shreds the back of your shirt and three claw marks, but it also grabs your backpack and rips it from you. So you no uh, longer have your backpack, 
you there are no hit points in this game, but you take some damage that could come out later, but you're still booking on by this point, you're now getting the edge of the cornfield and you're now going up to the house. Uh, Juniper, not Juniper con is right next to you. Just running uh, as fast as she can to keep up Lamont Anya. You see them approaching. Holy shit. Okay. It's, it's coming. It's, it's coming. I guess I'm going to have, I'm going to have my, my makeshift club ready. Um, okay. And, okay. <laughs> um, oh, what would I do? I guess I'm just going to try, once it gets into range, I'm going to try and swing swing for it, just at least knock it a bit more into the direction of the house, of the door at least. Okay. Uh, so you're running uh, Theo and Cass. What are you doing? How are you going to approach the house? Are you going to try to quickly... <laughs> jump the bike into the into the room. I'm like, Cass, do it, and I and I'm just holding on for dear life. Jump in. Oh yeah. Uh, can we can we recon that we made like a little ramp going up the, one, <laughs> the, one, the one step yeah, into the house? Hell yes, cool. yeah. Yeah. hell yes, we can. Yeah. Hell yes, we can. Yeah, we're going right for it. And okay. Cass is just like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Uh, Khan, thanks and for doing nothing the whole time. <laughs> thanks. Okay, we're going in. And Theo's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> And as they're running, um, Khan is saying, everybody, in the house, in the house. And they're running. You guys go up the ramp and in. Yeah. That, that wolf is oh, yeah. following up and in. Khan is right behind and in. Lamont and Anya, what are you doing? Oh, uh, I, well, they're all in. I can't lock them well, in. And Maka she said, said that every, was the whole plan. She said everybody in, though, right? Oh, she God. was. Yeah, she okay. was screaming it. I run in. I guess. Yeah, I'm just like uh, the vampire said so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not vampire. Okay, vampire. <laughs> <laughs> so if Lamont, you don't yeah, rhyme with fire. We it's not a vampire. In. You dive in? Yeah. Okay. As everybody gets in, uh, <laughs> Theo and um, Cass are like up against the wall. I imagine now you've got your bike in between you and the werewolf that is standing and huffing over you. <sighs> and in comes uh, Khan. This phantasmal force comes out of her hands and starts to light up this uh, this werewolf in front of it. And kind of gets control of it like a whole person and just gets it in spot in place. And behind you, Lamont and Anya, you see the door, kind of the spectral door go whoosh, and close up the threshold. And out coming out of the hallways and the other doors, you see more small humanoids that look much like Juniper or Khan. Um, same complexion. Another set of humanoids comes in and they've got that same spectral hold on. Uh, a creature that looks like it has gills. It's got a, a fin. It not has fins, but it has webbed feet. Another set comes in, and it's got hold on a fanged creature, very pale skin, maybe a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a, a third set of individuals come in, and they have hold of what looks like to be a a person pieced and stitched together, bolts coming out of its neck. And they're all there, and they're all pushing them down the stairs. Oh my God. This is Monster Squad! <laughs> Juniper <laughs> or Khan releases her hold of the werewolf and gives it to somebody else. And she turns to you, uh, Theo, and the rest and says, Sorry for the ruse. Uh, if you had known the truth, I doubt you would have helped me. You see, I'm not a young girl at all. In fact, I'm 40 years old, not even human. My people are called Throgafels. And we have traveled here from a long, long way away. A very, I knew a very it. long way away. <laughs> the creatures that you helped me capture were prisoners. That is true. Each from a different race that exists far outside of your solar system. When the Therinian, the one you called a werewolf, escaped his cell, he caused our ship to spin out of control, and your planet was the only habitable planet we could reach. Luckily, our camouflage unit was still intact, and we have been able to disguise ourselves to blend in with our surroundings. We were making repairs to the ship when you broke through our seal, weakening the defensive field and allowing the animals to escape. 
As, as Juniper speaks, the house around you begins to shake and rumble. Oh, no. The room seems oh. to fade into a bright light. Oh, to be no. replaced by a new room. Oh, the shit. one that looks clean and white. Okay, you uh, find yourself okay, surrounded. Burned down. You are surrounded by Throgafels, the same uh, Juniper uh, type of people. Very short, paled skin. Uh, they're hard at, at work managing flashing lights and control panels and sticks and, and joysticks. And they all of this looks completely alien to you all. Uh, Khan turns back to you. You did well in assisting us. And my superiors have decided. They have a higher purpose for you. No, you know, this no, might no, be no, a no, great no. inconvenience, Lamont. But you are going to have to come with us. I promise my mom I'd be home. <laughs> you watch through uh, what are now like viewports and portholes in the side of this uh, clean white and steel room. And the ship begins to rocket up through the clouds and into space, leaving your home and your planet behind. You are too confused and overwhelmed to feel much of anything else, and you try to convince yourself that it's all a dream. But as Earth begins to vanish into the distance, you are faced with the reality that this is happening. Earth is no longer your home, and you're about to have a whole new world to explore. And that's where we're going to end tonight. I just have one question. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me. Was the moon landing fake by Stanley <laughs> Kubrick? <laughs> um, the highest Thragafell, Mr. Kru Kubrick. <laughs> uh, we have seen we have seen some of your kind out our way um, it is it is confirmed um, and this, this leads knew it! <laughs> this leads into teens in space Adam so <laughs> you're now teens in space um, Love it. that that's kind of wrapping up here the end of uh, kids oh, on bikes boy. house on poplar court y'all are now space rangers uh, yes you're, you're monster hunters quickly promoted to space rangers uh you made it you saved the day although uh lamont you're not going to make it to practice on monday yeah no I i'm not doing my homework either apparently <laughs> i imagine um just to wrap out the night here uh tal Daz and kai Raptor pants <laughs> i butchered that uh twenty dollars each from you thank you so much um this was kids on bikes guys this is Featherfall Tabletop's first ever um, charity event, and nobody disappointed today uh, from the DMs to the players to the donators to everybody in chat. Everybody kind of killed it, and I think we're at 1,050. Is that the total, or did we get past that? Yeah, yep, 1,050. Uh, never in my wildest dreams, guys, would I think that we would have hit that far, but... I'll say thank you to the players here at this table, um, helping me <laughs> kind of get through this new system. As easy as it is, as it is and as rules light as it is, there are things that it's you kind of stumble over. It's a fun system. Yeah, yeah, it um, is. Uh, I thank you. Um, this could have definitely been a six-hour game. Uh, there were some things <laughs> that we kind of skirted around, but that's the way it goes. Maybe we'll go around too. Who knows? Um, but thank you all. I think everybody's kind of beat um draco playing in two back-to-back -back games yeah and, uh like a champ uh totally appreciate it yeah marathon so, runner nice shot. um anything else to say in chat i think i i i got nothing else to say I, i'm just overwhelmed and uh by by the outreach and the and the love and appreciation that has been shown today um, absolutely I, I think it i think i thank you thank you all um and with that we'll call it a night here at featherfall tabletop thank you so much everybody again uh, i'm rambling i just i just keep going that's fine <laughs> uh, thank you thank you everyone thank you. that was amazing <laughs>